it that you think you see? Is this gonna be scary? I'm scared already. <laughs> oh, I know what this is. Come on, come on! Rit, you, you two! Oh god, it's, it's five nights. Hide and seek? Huh? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> They're not in the, uh, Chuck E. Cheese? Not a creepy child's room. That's the one thing this didn't need. Okay, if this is a jump scare. Oh, God, I hate this stuff. Ah! Is that Foxy? That looks like Foxy. I'm gonna go now. <laughs> it's 1 a.m. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, I don't like the music. Ah! <laughs> Trailer. I've had this tweeted to me so many times and I just didn't watch the trailer. Oh, Five Nights at Freddy's 4? That's a terrible film. That is that so four. bad. I'm so sorry, I really support this game. I love it, but that's a really <laughs> ugly text. I'm embarrassed to say I don't know anything about this but the title. You have no idea what Five Nights at Freddy's is. That is it? It? Oh, is that that video game? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting that it's set in a house. I though. had no idea. That's yeah. cool. I mean, we had never have any idea. We learn everything from Game Theory and Markiplier. Don't we? Yeah. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk. God. Stupid FNAF. So, have you played the previous Five Nights at Freddy's? I have no idea what this is. I'm not a gamer. I have. I've played I'm Five not. Nights. I actually hated it. Yes, I have. Dan has fallen off the chair twice while playing these games. I screamed so loud that my headphones came off and I broke a screen. I have played all three. I say play. I really just sit next to Michael and look through my fingers while he plays. I like the atmosphere. I like to turn down the lights and put a onesie on and really get into it. So this game series to this point, the way it works is you play the role of a security guard in like a haunted Chuck E. Cheese-like restaurant. <laughs> okay. And the animatronic characters come to life when it closes and then come to your office to try to kill you. Why? <laughs> I mean, that's literally what you everyone thought when they went to Chuck E. Cheese. The gameplay is essentially just pointing and clicking, but it's become one of the most popular games on YouTube. Why is something so simple so popular? I think the kids love it. There's loads of kids that I've seen that are like, oh, I love Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm like, does it not terrify you? And they're like, nah. There's nothing more exhilarating than being scared. I can see that why that would be like fun. <laughs> kind of and fear is addictive. I personally am a huge fan of horror in general, um, but more than watching horror, I love taking a friend who hates horror to a horror movie because it's just the funniest thing to witness. I think it's because it's such a simple concept, like anyone can pick it up. It seems like the kind of game that people have a great reaction to and they get really scared. It's fun to watch other people play this game and, and freak out, right? Oh my gosh, there's a jump scare. But then there's the lore component as people are trying to unravel this, this unsolved mystery. Five Nights also benefited from practically every major gaming channel on YouTube playing the game. Why does it work so well to be uh, something that a gamer on YouTube would choose to play? It's, it's totally about hanging out with your friends. You are going to have a visceral reaction to the jump scare just like the person who is playing the game in the video. If you see someone else has got a video with loads of views on Five Nights at Freddy's, all the other gamers are gonna make the video of Five Nights at Freddy's I think as, well. as soon as videos of the first game went viral, it just became a kind of like a YouTube thing to do. Throughout the history of gaming on YouTube, horror games have always been a huge draw, right? Uh, PewDiePie started off with Amnesia, uh, everyone and their mother was playing Slender, uh, and so people love to be scared. So the game, as simple as it is, has a very intricate and detailed backstory and lore. Are you familiar with the lore and complicated backstory of the world of this game? I know nothing about this. The only time I've ever seen it is on Tumblr, or people use it as like reaction gifs on things. It's like a crazy pizzeria, and there was some crazy ex-employee that killed people and then stuffed them inside the suits because there was one missing. This is whole there's like think, several events that occurred before the first game, but I totally did read all the lore on Five Nights, and I watched uh, I watched Matt Pat's videos explaining all that stuff. The timeline is literally all in here. I'm gonna talk to the camera because we need we need to connect here, guys. The two biggest things that people are trying to uncover in this game are what was the bite of '87, which is this mysterious event that's referenced from the very first moments of the game, and secondly, who is this serial killer that keeps stalking these pizzerias? It's this figure that's only described as the purple guy. Can you tell I've thought way too much about this franchise? Why do you think people, for Five Nights at Freddy's specifically, have become obsessed with the lore? I don't know, I have no idea. The lore means there are things to do even when you're not playing the game. 
I used to play World of Warcraft constantly, and when I wasn't, I was reading Wowhead. I think there's like a fun mystery solving element to it. I mean, the game yeah. is so simple that it's quite funny to just like discover the backstory that is, you know, told by the spooky poster that you may not have realized. Most huge franchises, whether it be Star Wars or Zelda, they exist far beyond the actual games or the actual movies because people it can be creative. Yeah, on their can be own. creative. And it sounds like in this game they actually have that ability because nothing is fully tied together. It's actually a psychological phenomenon called cognitive completion theory. Humans want all of the pieces of a story to fit together in a neat, clean way. Scott Cawthon, the creator of the game, has done such a great job of giving you just enough information that you know that there's something beneath the surface. And so that's why people are so eager and, and rip this game to shreds to find every last ounce of, of hidden material. So Warner Brothers recently got the movie rights, so there might be a Five Nights at Freddy's Ooh, film. That would be cool. So what are your thoughts about that, that an indie game that YouTubers played can now get so huge that a movie might be made. Isn't that how everything happens now? I mean, that's what, exactly what happened with Flappy Bird. If they make Flappy Bird the movie, okay, I'm not going to that. It's weird that we have this influence now. I think it's great. I'm so glad I didn't do my master's in psychology and I just thought I'd just start making YouTube videos. YouTube is changing the world and it's like a huge part of culture. It's shifting back. It seemed to be before that everything came from traditional and pushed to YouTube and now it's kind of gone the opposite way. It shows the power of like a simple concept and how far it can go. It makes me feel really excited for the future because this will just keep happening. You can just say, look, all I need is some really talented people to like what I'm doing. And then, boom, you've already got your foot in the door. Another element of the game is trying to survive all five nights. Does that add to the addicting quality of wanting to try to just make it because it seems it's just another night? Yeah, it's really frustrating when you get to like night four, 3 a.m. and then Freddy comes and gets you because you're so close to finishing it. You can say, I did all five nights and night six, which is a bonus, then I, th I think there's like a there's like a credibility you can get. You get very mixed feelings when you hit a new night in Five Nights at Freddy's. It ticks over to 6 a.m. and you're like, oh God. And then it just goes straight into the next night and you're like, I don't even know why I was relaxed. Survivor bias means that you survive one day, you go, oh, well I'm still here, clearly this can be done. And, and clearly I'm gonna be okay. And then you live a second day, well, pff, two days in a row, this is easier than I thought but that's dangerous thinking. There's also a lot of people that think Five Nights is very overhyped, that it isn't that scary or only kids are playing, and that so many of the reactions to it are fake. What do you think about that? I feel like I would find it funny then, like, cause there's a certain point where I find scary movies just to be funny. Anyone who says it's not scary, they haven't got their headphones loud enough. Because when I did that jump scare, like when I got it and I leapt up, it was genuine. Everybody that disagrees yeah. is just like an edgy anti-circle jerker. For no, and it just annoys me so much. They're like, blah, blah, I don't like the beauty pie playing the scary game. And it's like, no, it's like objectively, it's a well-made indie game. And it's not the highest piece of art ever no, created, it's but it's made for, for what it is. It's great. You can't hate something just because it's successful, even Which is, though it didn't set out to be. You should be celebrating that's that. That's the reason most people don't like things to be yeah. honest. I would argue that Five Nights at Freddy's should have been the game of the year last year. Do I think that at this point they're like milking it for all it's worth? You know, four games in less than a year? Less than a year, Scott, give me a break. Say what you will about the scares, the, the gameplay, the graphics. It has clearly resonated with an audience and for that, I think it's worthy of respect. So finally, the game actually just came out earlier than it was supposed to. It's out now. It did? It did. Well, I was at VidCon, no less. Are you going to play this game right away, never, or eventually? I'm gonna say eventually. Eventually, for sure. Uh, yeah, can I borrow this? I'll watch some YouTube videos. I'll watch the YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna live through Mark playing it. Eventually. I wanna play it too. Okay, so we should play together. I'm flying back to Austin after this, and I'm sure it's gonna be the first thing I do, to be honest. I was totally one of those people that was like, I don't get it. Like, why? Why are they big? But I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, we're gonna make it straight away. I wanna see what happens as soon as we get back. From that trailer, though, it looks like I would actually wanna play it because it looks a bit different. Surprise, surprise, already played it. Theory's already done. Beating you to the punch this time, comment section. Oh! Thank you. Fuck <laughs> <For> my. <laughs> you. I got you. I actually got him! Yo, you got a video you want us to react to? Leave it in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. That's, that's my poor rendition of a jump scare.